is what happens. Now this was a trial, a very large trial, and many patients were enrolled, and the results just came out, and the answer is encouraging on one level, but a little bit disappointing on another. As you see from the numbers here, patients that received the bone marrow got a 5.5% increase in their function as measured by ejection fraction, which is the amount of blood that is ejected out of your heart. So the better the ejection fraction, the stronger your heart is. Now, of course, some people rec recover spontaneously from heart attacks, and you can see that by the number of the placebo, which is 3%. So a 3% increase in the capacity for the heart to do better was what you would get anyway. Now, this is not going to cure anybody in the long haul. And so, clearly, although it's a proof of principle that there is some effect, beneficial effect, we are far from the optimal protocol. Clearly, we have a lot of work to do. So what are the other ways in which we can address this? Maybe we can stimulate the heart itself to make new cells. And if that's the case, maybe that would help us to address the issue. So in our lab, we've tried a technique in mouse to see if that would work. And you're familiar with this story because of the IGF-1 growth factor treatment I told you about yesterday for muscular dystrophy. In this case, we tried the same trick, except we addressed the question of heart regeneration. To do this, we made a mouse that overexpressed this transgenic IGF-1 in the heart. And we did so by injecting a cardiac transgene into the heart of a mouse. And then we followed that mouse as the progeny developed that had the gene expressing this growth factor within the heart and looked to see whether we had any effect at all on the heart or whether these animals developed abnormally, because we're putting a lot more of this growth factor into these mice, and they have this growth factor from conception onwards. And miraculously, we found that the animals regulated very well. They saw the growth factor, they didn't seem to mind the growth factor. The only thing that we did see is that if you look at these pictures of mouse hearts as they get older, at two months of age, the mice had slightly larger hearts if they had IGF-1. But it was just a precocious growth to an adult stage because we found larger cells, which in this case was what we expected, but those cells never did anything other than get to the size they normally would be in a six-month-old mouse, and then the mouse seemed totally normal. So on one hand, we were very happy, and on the other hand, we wondered if we had just wasted our time. So we decided to try to mimic a myocardial infarction in a mouse. Now, mice actually don't like McDonald's. They don't eat rich food. It's really hard to get them to go into some sort of atherosclerosis. Um, they're not really fond of high cholesterol. They like carrots, unlike Doug. And they, um, therefore, ha you have to do something else. So what we do is we put a little string around the, or the coronary artery and tie it down a bit as if there was a clot in there. And that gives them the equivalent of a myocardial infarction as seen on the right. Now, we then can follow to see whether the animals that had the growth factor do better than the animals without. So on the left, you see a mouse heart that looks normal with a ventricle, the big left ventricle, in a cross section. And on the right, you see a control um, in which we opened up the mouse and gave it a myocardial infarction, closed it up and waited for a couple of months and then looked at it again. And you can see that this mouse has very nasty heart failure. That thin wall is exactly what patients look like after they've had a myocardial infarction and waited a long time. Now, a myocardial infarction, the same myocardial infarction technique on one of these animals that we had engineered to express the growth factor didn't appear to have the same response at all. And as you can see in the lower left-hand panel, there was a rather miraculous recovery. In fact, it reminded us, perhaps hopefully, of the way the zebrafish regenerates. And so we believe then that the way in which the growth factor works is somehow to retain some of the tricks of evolution that we've lost and go back to being able to regenerate the heart. And if you look at the actual cellular basis of this, I've done it as a cartoon here. On the left, you're familiar with this picture. It's a scar. It's, it's going to eventually cause problems for this mouse. On the right, we have brand new cells. We have a vessel going through it and essentially we're on our way to a complete recovery. Now, how could IGF-1 be helping? 
Well, one thing that we noticed is that IGF-1 overexpressing animals appeared to express a number of molecules that we associate with homing. And there are growth factors and all sorts of other ways in which we can find uh, tracks of cells that are preferentially drawn to regions of injury. And in fact, that's exactly what we saw, that these attractive molecules called chemokines were expressed at quite high levels in these animals. Finally, before I finish, I'd like to just mention a very, very new result, literally two weeks old. So I threw these slides together literally over the last two days to show them to you, because I think it's very exciting and it brings home a point that warms the cockles of my heart. And that is a, an experiment that was done by Paul Riley recently in which he tested the capacity for a molecule called thymosin beta-4, which is actually a molecule that helps cells rearrange their cytoskeleton, their shape, to help with the capacity for a mammalian mouse heart to regenerate. And what he found, in a word, was that injecting this molecule into the mouse's heart created a much better environment. In fact, it looked a bit like what happened when we overexpressed the IGF-1 gene. And when he looked in detail at how this actually occurred, it was uh, really astounding because the thymus in beta-4 was activating that epicardial layer just like the zebrafish does. And so it appeared that we were beginning to have a pathway here that we could actually start to imagine looks like a zebrafish regeneration pathway that we could artificially induce in a human heart. So we imagined that thymus in beta-4 might activate the epicardium to make new blood vessels. We know that FGF is another factor that we can deliver that might actually then turn those newly, f newly activated epicardial cells into cells that can actually make blood vessel cells, endothelial cells, and eventually then, hopefully, we can understand how with the IGF-1 gene, we might be able to build new blood, uh, build new heart muscle itself. So in fact, we believe that there might be ways in which we could replace cells, we might be able to stimulate the heart to make new cells, and we can even keep it alive by improving the way in which the hearts revascularize their tissue using this rather amazingly reminiscent uh, uh, protocol that looks for all the world like a protocol that the zebrafish has used by definition. Anyway, just to finish off then, here are some of the ways in which cells might be used to cure heart disease. And in many ways you can think of many organs standing in for this heart because the ideas are the same. The ideas come from the possibility for cells within the tissue itself to regenerate and how can we activate those cells that might be available that we're not even aware of within a tissue that could be cajoled into helping out, and finally cells that might come in secreting different factors that could help us to uh, convince the heart that it actually could regenerate in a better way. Now before I close and take questions, I'd like to uh, just acknowledge the fact that I have a rather extraordinary group of people to thank, which are my own lab. And I have to tell you that they're watching this from Italy. They called me yesterday and told me that I was a disgrace for the t-shirt episode. <laughs> and that if I didn't do better, I wasn't allowed back. But I mean, in all honesty, that they've been wonderful in letting me out of school for a couple of days to come and talk to you. And um, it's really a pleasure to have uh, young people in our laboratories who get as excited about science as we do. And I'd just like to acknowledge all those wonderful people in a rather salubrious environment in a small trattoria. In